First of all, I want to acknowledge the work of my colleagues. Uh, this is a little or yeah, a, a project that started very small and it's getting to be much bigger with a PhD uh, project by uh, Yassan Bournas, who sits here. He will continue this topic, but the project was started together with a bunch of industry partners, um, of which I should mention uh, Paul Rogers from BAU, who was uh, inviting me into this project, and Max Tilbach from Bank Dahlgren, and then we've had very nice uh, people helping us with the simulation uh, via Vaculi at BAU. Uh, Yasson Bornas has been doing a lot also at Lund University and uh, who am I missing? Anna Larsson at Bengt Dahlgren. So I, I'm going to show uh, really a lot of simulations and uh, don't believe that I did them myself. <laughs> myself. I don't do that anymore, but I have great helpers doing that. Uh, there was also involvement of Maria Lundgren and Marlin Alenius from White Architect in the process of selecting um, the buildings that we studied. Um, next slide is there. Yes. <coughs> so. Uh, so just to give you the context, this is uh, the country of Sweden where I live. I'm from Canada originally, but I've lived in Sweden almost uh, 15 years of my life. Uh, and I work here at Lund University in the south, but it's a very long country which is located at a uh, northern latitude. Uh, and we have a context, a climatic context of a very uh, overcast sky conditions most of the time, especially during the winter. We also have four months where the sun sets very early and rises very late, uh, generally a risk of not having enough daylight. Uh, at the moment in Sweden, there is a context of um, a lot of immigration and there's, there's been a housing crisis for a very long time. So there's a lack of housing and we're building a lot of houses, new dwellings everywhere. It's a, generally speaking, it's the best place in the world to be an architect at the moment. So if you look for a job, please apply. Uh, there are working sites everywhere. And the government, I think, has said that we were going to build around 700,000 units of dwellings by year 2025 or something like that. So it's a, a crazy uh, situation. There is also a very big push for urban densification, which is pushed by environmental uh, pressures and so forth. Uh, we also have current regulations in the building code that are requiring a minimum point daylight factor of 1%. And I want to point out, I don't know if I have a, do I have a pointer on this? No, sorry. <laughs> No. Okay, so the DFP that you see there is um, a, a daylight factor measured as a specific point, and I will talk a lot about this, so remember that. And in these regulations, there is also something that says that all rooms used more than occasionally must comply, and this is really uh, where the problem lies, we believe. Uh, so all of this uh, situation together creates kind of a, um, a conflict and there is a lively debate in the building industry because once all the building plans are produced, they don't pass the test and then uh, there is a lot of uh, problems there and uh, so we are trying to uh, find solution to that. And so some of the problems I will mention here with this point daylight factor definition, uh, this uh, point daylight factor is measured one meter away from the darkest wall halfway in the room by definition. This was uh, defined around the 1970s before the computer age and uh, there was a very famous researcher in Swin Sweden who wrote a book Rekna med Daxius which means uh, calculate with daylight and you can actually go in and calculate manually this point daylight factor without any computer and we are stuck with this law uh, still today at the age of computer and uh, it's problematic not only because when you are working with, for example, computer simulations, you use most of your time trying to locate this point instead of doing an area uh, daylight factor calculation. The other problem is also that if you have more than one window, then it becomes kind of a, a game playing to define where exactly is this point, where is the darkest wall, is it here or there? And depending on where you place it, it might affect a lot the results. So you might want to select the point that is more favorable for you while it's maybe not uh, true. Um, 
There is also in the current building regulations a simplified method called the area factor method or so-called AF method. Uh, and this is for people who are not going to do simulations or calculations. However, this method suffers from being extremely limited. Uh, it includes just one window. Uh, the window has to be symmetrically placed. The room sizes are limited and especially here the shading angle of this window is limited to 30 degrees and this is clearly not compatible with current uh, dense, uh, urban densities that we see. Uh, so given this context and the conflicts and the problem, the research problem, we were more or less given the, uh, the role here uh, by the Swedish building industry to try to study this problem and come up with uh, concrete solutions. So we uh, devised a, a research project where the goal was to analyze the daylight requirements in the Swedish building code and the environmental certifi certification system in order to modernize them with more realistic targets that will protect daylighting uh, while resol resolving the conflict with urban densification. And uh, we should also propose a new simplified AF or area factor method for non-experts which would be compatible with dense urban planning. And you can see here an illustration that Marlene Alenius has made showing this 30 degrees that is currently in this uh, method, but that in reality we're working with much sharper angles. Uh, so, I'm sorry, it's a bit academic. I hope I'm not boring you. Uh, so the method is based on several steps. The first step and the two first steps, they are in blue because that, this is about how far we have gotten so far. So the first step was consisting of doing a kind of inventory of the existing residential building stock, mainly multifamily housing, and carrying advanced daylight simulations on this stock. And this is what I'm going to show today. Uh, based on that, we are demanded to come up with a proposed new regulation quite quickly because, the, as you understand, the problem is very present. We need to find a solution to this next uh, month or something like that. So we're going to try to use this first step to come up with a better uh, definition. But the project continues. We, we will also do uh, surveys to inhabitants to ask them if they think the daylight level is sufficient. And we have already started with that. And we're also measuring values in the existing stock to check our simulations. And the subsequent steps are uh, comparison and probably development of more appropriate daylight metrics. We're going to explore this data set with other metrics like, for example, the daylight autonomy and UDI and so forth. It'll make John very happy. <laughs> uh, and then we'll propose a new AF method and finally a handbook for non-experts. So just to give you an idea, this is Sweden again. There was a building selection process. Most of the buildings, and these, each of these represent a building that was selected. So most of these buildings are located in the big cities, uh, Gothenburg, Stockholm, and we're adding new buildings in Malmö. There's one building in Örebro. And we also looked at the distribution of buildings uh, in the building stock. That was the, the, the job of the Stockholm office to do that. Uh, and our sample is represented here, so you see the total share of rooms studied in this project compared to the total share of existing apartments. And why we show that is that it's not perfect, but we tried to get a sample that was quite representative of what is found out there in the building stock. As I said, we're completing with more buildings in the places where we find that we should have more. So this is just to give you an illustration of uh, some of the buildings that we simulated, this is only for the buildings that were simulated in at LTH. Uh, and you can see them according to the year of construction, how they look like. And here you see their footprint and you see in red is the amount of rooms that were simulated, for example, in this building uh, and so forth. And each building is has a number and so forth. So it's quite a lot of work to do that. Uh, here I show the, sim the simulation sequence. So just remember that building, apartment, and room level. So we select uh, a number of buildings, and th then for each building, we select some floors to study, not all of them, 
Uh, in, it, in each floor, we take the only the rooms which are used more than occasionally. We remove everything that's in storage or toilets or whatever. And then uh, we look at room level. We study lighting at room level. And concretely, this was done by starting with plan uh, and elevations and then making a CAD drawing and then uh, shooting that into Rhino, uh, Diva, Honeybee, and so forth, and then to a, a large, huge database, which is now an access database. So there is a lot of work, and my students told me that 70% of the work was here to build the CAN model. I don't know. Yes. So this is the results from this phase. We have 102 buildings, 4,800 apartments, and 15,000, almost 16,000 rooms simulated in their context. So that's a rich database of values. And you can see here the building ID number, and each circle represents uh, one room. And in the red here, you have the median value for each, uh, the median value of all room for each building. And so that gives you a kind of a genetic <laughs> analysis uh, of uh, the building stock where you can see for the vast majority, the median value lies above the 1%, but there are some exceptions where you have buildings that are clearly below. And so we're looking into da this database, analyzing various things. And for example, we've looked at how the median daylight factor value compares to this uh, point daylight factor value, because we see that there is a quite vast interest to move on to use a median value. Uh, and uh, we find that it correlates very well, especially if we uh, have an offset from the walls with a 0.5 meter for the grid. So we say that the correlation between the median and the daylight factor point depends on the grid. If we have a 0.5 grid, then we can replace the daylight factor point with the median, and the correlation will be very high. Uh, I just want to show you here that the, this just shows the complying, uh, uh, com uh, if we apply the daylight factor point, uh, larger than 1%, uh, the percent compliant rooms per construction year. And we clearly see that some years of construction have much more complying apartment. And if you look at the footprint of these buildings, you can see the distance between buildings is much larger. And that's why it's, it works. So that's good. However, um, if we then ask that not only the, the each each room of each apartment complies, and we can see a big drop in compliance. So the the problem is really that we're demanding that all rooms use more than occasionally shall comply, and there we lose a lot of apartments. And if we look at the building level, it's even worse. So therefore, we think that the current daylight uh, requirements are not possible. We have to, to change them a little bit. Two? OK, I'm, I have two slides left. Uh, <coughs> so what we did, we looked at our database, and it's not, uh, this work is not finished. We're going to move on with this and, and do much more statistical analysis. But so far, we have, it was proposed by the building industry that we should lower the daylight uh, factor point requirement to 0.8%. And so we tested that on our database, and we saw that doing that would change almost nothing if we look at the percent of complying rooms, buildings, uh, rooms, apartments, building would change very little. So that would not solve the problem. We also tested, for example, uh, changing the rule to an average daylight factor over two. And we saw that if we look at the room level, there would be less compliance. So that's not a good thing. And then we have started to look at perhaps asking a median daylight factor uh, larger than one. And we saw but by doing that, I don't have time to go all in the detail, but by doing that, we actually increase the level of, of compliance at apartment and building level. So I'm going to have to shorten a little bit. Uh, so our findings right now are that 8% of the existing multifamily buildings in the study sample do comply with regulations. It is very low, so therefore we need to change. Uh, we see that if we lower the requirement from 1 to 0.8, we will not really change the situation. That's not the way to go. We apply different rules for, for compliance, and we see that we, it yields different outcomes. But what we 
find most promising is to apply an area-weighted daylight factor median per apartment larger than 1%, or to formulate it in a way where we say 50% of apartment area should have a daylight factor larger than 1. And we find that this area-based metric seems to be more intuitive for architects and in line with current European and international trends. Uh, and secondary findings, I'm really rushing through this. Uh, we find that, of course, the, this current uh, point daylight factor is very difficult to determine, especially for rooms with irregular shape. Uh, and we find that grid geometry matters. We should, um, we should be clearly, it should be clearly specified in the regulations, which is not at the moment. So this really needs to be uh, clarified. And we suggest 0.5 meter offset. Um, we saw also that a key parameter affecting this, the daylight factor point, is the window sky exposure. There will be more about this in my student's PhD thesis later, so follow his work. And finally, an interesting finding that was that amongst all the rooms that were analyzed, the kitchens uh, were the rooms that performed most poorly. And that was really uh, bad because kitchens are where we need to have most light. So uh, that maybe we need to change a little bit the way that we plan buildings. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> What's not to say? <laughs>